good evening and welcome to another episode of the Malik Show Live. And might I say that on tonight, on this special night, it is the one year anniversary show of the Malik Show Live. And I just got to give a hand clap. I got to give a hand clap. But before I get with my special guest on tonight, Maestro Jeffrey Corey is here and he is live with us. But just before we transition to Jeffrey, I personally just want to give this part of the show to just to say this um, um, live. Um, one year ago in September the 17th, 2018, I had said yes to something that could possibly change half of my life. As most of people know who Malik is, I'm all entertainment and humor, but on the flip side, I never thought that my show would possibly go to social media, to TV, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm happy to say that one year later on this day, in this month of 2019, I'm still standing. I had some, uh, you know, I had some trials and tribulations, but I'm still kept on going, and I have had some of the greatest shows in uh, the one year that we have been standing. But um, before we transition, there's a few people that I want to say thank you to. First, I want to thank my producer, uh, Mr. Tom, for being here with me um, since day one that we've started. I want to I want to thank him for all the hard work that he does behind the scenes of the Malik Show Live. I also want to thank my family, the Sullivans and the Shabazzes, my grandfather, my mother, my grand, both of my grandmothers. They have helped me with the show and they have done so much behind the scenes and I want to say thank you to them. Last but not least, I have to thank all of the guests that have been on this show with me and via satellite. Um, I have some pictures of them that I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, show producer. Um, that's me doing selfies in the green room. God, I miss that hairstyle. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, that was um, the first time I had a suit on in the Christmas annual musical that we did last December. So we're going to keep, keep it on going. But yes, Tia Askia. Supervisor by Curtis Evelyn Little, Amanda Lynn, Pastor Jacqueline Steele Queen, Miranda Sanders of Kadesh, Cheryl Jackson, Isaiah Thomas, Sam Roberts, Johnny Steele, and Dr. Altavon Clark. These people, and along with other names, Pastor Ronzel Pretlow, uh, Overseer Renee Winston, and so many other names that have uh, came, Michelle Prather. Uh, but more, I just uh, want to say thanks to these p amazing people for coming, being a part of the show. I enjoyed my time with you, and I look forward to seeing you again, and so on and so forth. Now on tonight. We're moving to our anniversary guest on tonight. I'm glad that he said yes. My friend and brother, Jeffrey Corey, the maestro that we all call him. Uh, we have great names such as Elton John, Richard Smallwood, but Jeffrey Corey is one of a kind. I'm going to read his bio, and we're going to get into the interview, and then we are going to hear some real classical music of him hitting that organ piano on tonight. <laughs> but Jeffrey, Cordy, Jeffrey Corey, a native of Alexandria, Virginia, a proud alumnus of the illustrious Howard University, is continuing his studies in music education from Trinity Washington University in Washington, D.C. His first music training was at the age of three as he sat in numerous rehearsals of the St. Joseph's Gospel Choir with his mother as a toddler, Jeffrey was always fascinated by music and the piano. He watched and listened attentively to the music and the choir director while absorbing all that he saw and heard. His mother recorded each rehearsal and young Jeff seized every opportunity to play at his own tape player. He soon began to play out every note on his toy piano and his one finger playing soon resulted in the use of all 10 as he developed the ability to play whatever his little ears heard. 
He later learned to read music and develop his musical skills and loved the classical music under the late Miss Jacqueline Henry Green. Jeff was destined to excel in music and is known throughout the Washington metropolitan area as Alexandria's maestro and soloist extraordinaire. During his maculation at Howard University, he was exposed to the jazz genre as well as the classical music genre. Jeff was a company for several theater productions, the legendary Howard Gospel Choir, the Howard University Community Choir, a vocalist of the premier jazz ensemble Afro Blue, and the Andrew Franklin Memorial Chapel Choir. Jeff will remain in the constant demand throughout the Washington metropolitan area, serving as a pianist and a choir master director. He has held memberships of the Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia, Symphonia Music Fraternity, Choir Phi Sci, Class Sci Phi, National, National Music Phi. Society, DC Chapter, and Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. He has also shared the stage with some of gospel's greatest legends, Richard Smallwood, Vicki Winans, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Vanessa Williams, Jose Placio Domingo, William Beckton, Twinkie Clark of the Clark Sisters, Chelsea Green, Brent Jones, Stevie Wonder, Yolanda Adams, and the late Daryl Coley. Jeff served 10 faithful years as the music teacher and choir director of the St. Francis Xavier Catholic Academy in Southeast Washington, D.C. He presently served as the music instructor at the From the Heart Christian School, a company at his home church from the Heart Church Ministries in Suitland, Maryland, choir director of the 8 a.m. Sunday morning mass choir at Our Lady Queen of Peace, Catholic Church in Arlington, Virginia, and a company choir director at the Pennsylvania Avenue Baptist Church in Southeast D.C. Throughout faith in the almighty and everlasting God, Jeff has overcome many personal obstacles and serious illness in his life as he has grown to be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. His quiet manner and growth in articulating what he feels his sweet deposition, but determined spirit has won him with respect and many friends in the current and near future. Jeff is pursuing his own music school for vocal and instrumental students, the JC School of Music and the JC Sacred Music Institute. The mission of the JC School of Music is a community which serves the true musician from various backgrounds. The goal and approach for the school is to prepare each student to become fully equipped musicians by training their spiritual growth into musical excellence and bringing an excitement in their own musical craft. The JC of School and Sacred Music Institute is currently located in three locations, Temple Hills and Suitland, Southeast Washington, D.C., and Alexandria, Virginia. Their founding scripture is Psalm 33 and 3, O sing unto the Lord a new psalm, play skillfully with a loud noise. All right, it's interview time. After reading this amazing bio, um, Jeff, might I say, you are one of a kind. But before we get into this interview, we have a picture that we want to show, producer. We're going to start at your early years. Yes, there go young <laughs> Jeffrey. Young Jeffrey. Whoa. So, Jeffrey, we know you're from Alexandria, Virginia, and everything. So, tell us a little bit about your childhood and who is Jeffrey Corey? Well, I'm from, I'm obviously Jeffrey Corey, and I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. And I was born and raised there, currently still live there. And I am a family, in a family of just my parents. I have one older sister much older sister, and pretty much I believe I was born into a family of Christians as well as a really strong spiritual upbringing. My mother's Catholic, my father's Baptist, so there was always music going on in the household mm -hmm. as well as music as I was going, going to school. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't have a lot as far as the smart intelligence like normal students did. Normal kids would like to 
run up and down, go outside and play. I was just sitting in the house. I was very quiet, very, very artistic. Didn't have a lot as far as communication, but I knew how to speak through music. I knew how to play. So at three, I was in preschool, and without talking, without even moving a muscle, somehow I heard jingle bells on the radio. We was in music class, so every, I don't remember this because my parents told me when I was growing up that I would play jingle bells with one finger like this the whole time. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I was doing the rhythm. Mm, 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 mm. So my music teacher turned around at the time was like, hey, it was you. We thought it was a radio playing. So that from then on out, that's when they started investing in music. By the time I was five, I started training, formal training, as well as learn how to play classical music. I hated classical. I hated classical music when I was a child, but somehow I kept going. I kept playing while my kids were, when my friends, I don't have the kids then, but while I was outside playing, I wanted to stay in the house and perfect my craft. Little did I know that my form of training was based in the church. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I grew up in the Catholic church where we did a lot of traditional hymns, a lot of contemporary hymns, and we had a gospel choir. Mm -hmm. Thankfully to God, we had a gospel choir at my church. So I didn't play for them per se, but I got a lot of spiritual upbringing as well as musical taste. It started to expand from the classical world to the gospel world. By the time I was 13, I actually had my first transition on producer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. We, well, speaking of 13, we have a picture of you. Um, we got some young pictures, though. Hey, yeah, you know, I go. wish I had my producer just to um, <laughs> transition on. But speaking of your mother, we uh, got you and your beautiful mother together. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, you and your father. And my father. So <laughs> it, um, I guess dad definitely um, was music influence. He actually was not. He was artist, artist influence. He was business oriented mm -hmm. as well as very professional. He loved taking pictures, even as a child. Was always had a camera in his hand. He was like, "Smile, do this, do that." Now he's a professional photographer now. Awesome! So that is so awesome. They work hand in hand. So awesome. Well, Jeff, um, you know, uh, thirteen. You, so basically, going back. Well, let's stop right here, producer. Um, so thirteen. You were saying, you know, you were saying um, you kind of like ventured out and stuff. Basically, right. So. Of course, in Alexandria, growing up in Alexandria, I was still in the Catholic Church, but even my piano teacher was there in Alexandria, Miss mm -hmm. Green, may she rest in peace. She trained me classically. It wasn't until at 13, I started my first church job at a Episcopal church, which was two or three blocks away from the Catholic church I attended. Mm -hmm. So I played for them for a while and one block away, was a Baptist church that I played at, and I was the youth choir director at 14. So I played and directed the youth choir until we got ready to go to college. So from that point on, everybody in Alexandria knew who I am. Who Jeffrey Corey was. Pretty much. So um, here's my next question, Jeffrey. Now, um, stated in your bio, um, so here is my next thing. Let's continue on. Uh, there's another picture that we want to um, show <laughs> because um, wow. definitely the pictures do speak. I, was so um, I had no gray hair back then. <laughs> listen. <laughs> and now I'm showing. <laughs> Woo. My God. Well, those are all of yeah. your young pictures when, when you know, and you know, like I say, you all dressed up. So, of course, you was going to play somewhere. But here's my next question, though, to you, Jeff. Um, as a child, did you ever have time to be a, a kid? And what I mean by that is, you know, we have a lot of artists um, that are big now, some of their stories, even to some of them that's been on the Malik Show, they've always said, well, you know what, I've always done what I'm doing now. I never had time to just do what regular kids or teenagers do. Have you ever done anything of that? I, I believe it's a little bit of both. It was, but I chose to perfect my craft. Mm -hmm. I chose while my friends went outside and played basketball and 
did video games. I, I chose to actually do a little bit of that so, so I can have some type of good experience back then. But at the same time, I didn't like going outdoors. Mm -hmm. I didn't like running. I didn't like jogging. I didn't like riding a bike. I didn't like doing boy things except <laughs> stay at home mm -hmm. and be on the piano and just maybe I do a couple video games. And I did soccer sometimes and basketball, but mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy it because it was always competing. And it was something that I was not good at doing mm -hmm. versus something that I love to do, which is music. Music. So I music listen, really, I agree. it's in my bones, it's in whatever I walk. And every time I talk or every time I'm thinking about something, I could be at a science class or history class and songs be playing constantly, nonstop. Mm, how would I play this? Mm, how would I sling that? It will always be going on and on. Awesome. Well, let's move on to another segment of the show. Let's talk about college. And producer, oh, yeah. there is a picture of Jeff in a college outfit at Howard. U oh no, we ain't got that. <laughs> we go. Oh, we gonna talk about hey. that, but we ain't got that far yet. But there's there's right. another segment I want to talk about. Jeff is all in his. He's in his college grad. Yes, there we are. Let's hey. talk about Howard University. And by then, I guess you were at the age of in your early twenties. Yes. So let's talk about the college life because Howard University, I just feel that's where really the big things start to kick in. So let's talk about Howard a little bit. So I went in as a music education major and before I became that, I started a pre-college program because my test scores weren't acceptable at the time. So I did a summer program to help me get into Howard and I followed my my hero, he's my hero, Richard Smallwood. He attended Howard and graduate. Mm -hmm. He's a graduate alum of Howard University. Well, so I wanted to be just like him. So Well, speaking of, since you brought him up, we might as well talk about him. Producer, there is a picture of um, our guest on tonight and the maestro himself, legendary Richard Smallwood. Um, if you could go to that picture uh, along with the other artists, uh, and let me just describe this man producer while I'm talking. He is a light skinned, nice haired man yes. with glasses. <laughs> so you should see, I just want you to just go straight to that picture producer as you hear my voice. <laughs> um, Richard Smallwood, Jeff and Richard Smallwood. If you can go to a producer, please. Uh, he's, he's gonna go to it. But it's him and Richard Smallwood. We definitely want to talk about because Richard Smallwood did come out of Howard University, definitely. So, yes. uh, producer, if you can just go to that picture, it's Jeffrey and Richard together. We just gotta take time. It's just oh boy, just scroll up. So what I is going on? I well, want to share okay. that because of Richard Smallwood and what he did in the earlier years, he used to fuse classical and gospel together mm -hmm. and that would attracted me to his music a lot but also he is the founding pianist I'm sorry founding organist for the Howard Gospel Choir mm -hmm. which I was a member of I became a member at my freshman year and because I joined the Howard Gospel Choir I saw him off and on throughout the time I was at Howard University mm -hmm. as well as being the pianist for several other choirs on campus, mm -hmm. Howard University Community Choir, the Chapel Choir, as well as rehearsal covenants for the University Choir, mm -hmm. as well as um, just being a part of Afro Blue, which is a vocal jazz mm -hmm. choir at the time. At, they still going strong. And just being involved musically because of what Richard did. I didn't quite do exactly what he did, but I found my own way which is I stopped doing music ed and I switched over to jazz my junior year. I went over to jazz my junior year. I really wanted to get out of Howard. That's why I went there. Listen, <laughs> come on now. But at the same time, it was a wonderful experience because I got to meet several talented students, several talented classmates and learn quite a bit. Turned out a scholarship from Oberlin University in Ohio. I turned that down. I was gonna go there for four years on an organ scholarship, mm -hmm. but I turned that down and I said, I'm going to Howard, nothing's gonna stop me. Even if I have to take summer classes, I was willing to go to Howard and matriculate there and I wouldn't take anything. I wouldn't trade in it for anything. I wouldn't even go back and change anything. Mm. Wow, 
Wow. Well, I'm glad that, um, like I said, we was waiting for our producer to show the picture, but I guess, you know, we had a little thing of that. Well, probably the second half of the show, because we definitely have you with some amazing, you know what, I tell you what, while we got time, because really, ladies and gentlemen, the second half, Jeff is going to play his heart out. He got the keyboard ready and everything, the tracks is ready. Well, I like, I, you know, I'm a big fan, I'm a big track fan. But anyway, <laughs> but we just, um, in this last seven minutes of the show, we have some, we have some amazing people that you are with. Now, stay right here, producer. Stay right here. We, the first picture we have uh, with you tonight is a beautiful young lady. She is one of the funniest artists that I've ever, I met her at the Ricky Diller concert three or four years ago, and mm -hmm. might I say, she has an awesome personality. But I did see you and her on a video on her Instagram page, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. But, but kicking off, you with amazing artists. Let's talk about you and the one and only Lexi Allen. Okay. Well, I met her obviously last year, and it turns out that she is my sorority sister mm -hmm. of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and I'm also a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated here in the D.C. area. And it wasn't actually a beautiful way we met because about three years ago I was in the hospital based on a serious illness and I was watching Lexi live on her Periscope page mm -hmm. and and I was just typing in because I didn't know if I was gonna have surgery that day mm -hmm. and she was just playing a, a lot of music just being her goofy self and everything and then mm -hmm. I typed in saying I need you to pray for me I don't know if I'm gonna have surgery I'm scared. I don't know what to do. So, and she just switched everything. She didn't know who I was. She switched everything, and she started going into prayer, turning on gospel songs, and just praying for me. And two years later, I meet her at a local grocery store, and she was sharing with me that she had put out a CD, put out a new album. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was willing to purchased that from her and I shared that same testimony to her and she was touched by that just like I'm telling you as well. So I didn't play for her yet, at least not right now, but I will in the near future. So if you're out there, I'll be checking you out, Lexi, all right? All right. <laughs> well, Jeff, we have another picture of you with another amazing, oh, well, you know what? This oh, is Miss Scandal herself. <laughs> Let's talk about you and Carrie Washington. Come on here. All right, so I met her. I met her when she was in Georgetown at the time. Mm -hmm. And this was a day I'll never forget, 2011. This is before Scandal came out, mm -hmm. where it was in October and it was snowing. Mm -hmm. Now, that never happens in October. I mean, anything is possible now, but. Listen. Anything is possible nowadays, but it was, it was at a local cupcake store. She was promoting American for the Arts campaign, and I just happened to see her, and I've known her through her work as well as knowing her, you know, her social media pages and movies and anything you think of before Scandal hit. Now, I never knew she would be so successful in, in the show Scandal, but even that boosted up my fan pace because I wanted to be with her. Be like, ooh, I love her. Mm. She's mm. awesome. I mean, just a wonderful young lady and and she's just awesome just an awesome person to be with awesome well, we have another picture of you with another artist now let's talk about one of my greatest friends in the church of god in christ i look forward to seeing this gentleman every time when we have a national meeting and um he's so amazing let's yeah. talk about you and the one and only donnie mcclurkin i met i met donnie mcclurkin a few years ago and this was at a local church in Alexandria where they had a, a conference. They had a church conference. And I was on organ at the time. So he didn't really sing. He just, well, he sang a little bit, but he was the guest speaker for that. And I just, it was just, that's all it was. It was just meeting each other, getting to know each other. And I also asked him to pray when I was going through my serious health challenge at the time so i appreciate him for his heart and his willingness to be with 
whomever needs prayer or whoever needs an encouraging word. And that's what I like about artists like him, who is not just about what they can do on stage, but what can you do off stage? Mm -hmm. Can your message meet somebody when you're off the stage or even when you're on stage? Are you consistent with it? Awesome. Well, we have one more picture we're going to show, and then we're going to transition into part two. And uh, we're going to talk about the health challenge, if you're comfortable. And then we're going to hear some good music. Last but not least, for part one with Jeffrey Corey, we have uh, my friend and brother, Brooklyn, New York, Brooklyn's own, uh, yes. the one and only, Vincent Bohannon. Now, let's talk about uh, you and Vincent. So I met, I met Vincent quite a few times whenever he would come into the D.C. area with his choir. And a few years ago, he put out a song, God's Gonna Do Just What He Says. And I fell in love with his song to where I would just play my own rendition of it. I like songs that really have a message that are very, 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 very inspiring. So what I do is I take the particular song and we all internalize it differently or I interpret it differently. So I do a piano solo based on what he's done and send it back to him. He was blessed by it. And and just a wonderful young man of God who's also went through so much in his life. He had lost his pa his mother and he's still pressing on. He's a new pastor now yeah. at his church in New York. And he's just sending wonderful messages through his music and being an encourager to several others like myself. Awesome. Well, we're 50 some seconds into our first half of the first, the one year anniversary show, the Malik Show with Jeffrey Corey. Part two, and uh, Jeffrey will still be with us. We're gonna, we have some more pictures of him with some amazing people we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk a little, just a little bit about um, his health, because maybe it could help somebody out there. You never know. And on, to, on part two, Jeff is going to bless the Malik show with some good music. And I'm going to sustain myself because one thing I love is some good music. What can we say? This is the one year anniversary show. Jeffrey Corey is here. He's live. You all come back for part two. We're going to still talk to him more. And we're going to hear some good music on part two. This is yours truly, the one and only Malik Shabazz Sullivan. God bless you.